China's grip on India's fertilizer supply has farmers on edge and new regulations are shaking up the industry. Today we dive into the heart of India's agriculture lifeline, specialty fertilizer sector. From trade wars to groundbreaking innovations, what does this mean for our farmers, our food security and for our future? Joining me is Mr. Rajiv Chakravarti, President of Soluble Fertilizer Industry Association. Welcome to PTI. Thank you for having me here. China's fertilizer exports to India were halted, hitting her farmers hard. How dependent is India on Chinese imports and what chaos did this ban unleash on our supply chains? Uh, we started becoming dependent on China uh, since 2005 when the Europeans started uh, sourcing goods from China and uh, selling to Indian markets. Uh, th then gradually they build their capacity, build their technology to um, capture the entire world market. So we were not, India was not the exception, so we, we started becoming dependent on China. Uh, today we import 80% of our specialty fertilizer from China. Mm, remaining 20% is indirectly traded from China. So in a way, except the 5% of NPK formulations that we produce, 95% we are dependent on Chinese supplies. Uh, this has increased the prices of fertilizer by almost 40%. And uh, there is always a shortage. Uh, now this impact, if we assess the impact, the impact was not so visible this time because the actual season for uh, usage of specialty fertilizer starts from September, where uh, in various cash crops, horticulture crops like grapes, banana, farmers start using drip irrigation and then uh, they use uh, solubility, soluble fertilizer and specialty fertilizer extensively. So this happened before the start of the season, so we have not seen the impact yet. Now China's borders are open again and fertilizer exports are back on. Mr. Chakravarti, will this bring relief to our farmers with lower prices and better supply or is this just a temporary fix? It's a temporary fix because China is closing uh, the window, export window uh, from October. So they will be closing it for the entire world market, not only for India. Uh, with India, issues are uh, resolved uh, as, as we understand now. Uh, but then, then once they stop the supplies or they start restricting the supplies, they don't stop it uh, completely. Uh, they restrict it by imposing inspections and delay the consignments. So that, the, the, that process will start again from October. Here is the question. With Chinese exports to India coming to end from October 1st, how India is prepared to face this challenge? Uh, we will be we will not see much of effect impact this time except the price hikes anyways price hikes will impact from farmers directly uh, we have very very good uh, you know global sourcing uh, players in the market who will be sourcing their entire consignments entire requirement in in this one month only people have started working on it many of them are uh, SFIE members also uh, and then uh, maybe by mid of um, mid of the season we will start getting supplies indigenous supplies also so the, the, that's how we are planning to uh, face this challenge and it's, it's a, I, I don't think this time we will have much of difficulty now let's talk about game changer you have spearheaded india's first indigenous water soluble fertilizer technology backed by the ministry of mines mr chakravarti Tell us, how will this breakthrough transform farming and cut our reliance on imports? Uh, fertilizer technology or production, any production technology is very important for any country. Because if we have process, then we dominate the market. Uh, my aim was to make, make India, especially for uh, specialty fertilizer, an export uh, dominating country, not an import dependent country. So we, uh, after spending almost seven years on the research of uh, developing a process with Indian raw material uh, and uh, Indian designed uh, plant and uh, you know, it's, it's a true, true make in India uh, proposition, uh, we, have, we are able to develop it and we have gone through several uh, layers of scrutiny uh, of uh, government of mines. After that we have received um, support to develop a pilot plant. This pilot plant is now ready for scale up and uh, we are already discussing JVs with many leading fertilizer companies. That sounds revolutionary, but breakthroughs don't come easy. What hurdles did you face in developing this technology and when will farmers see it in their fields? 
there were there were certain hurdles in terms of because uh, you know uh, research uh, R&D means uh, a failure game of thousand times. Uh, we only success once you know after failing for thousand times. So uh, that has uh, it's it's common to every R&D process. So we have also faced that we spend a lot of money and then we we in fact I risked my entire uh, life in in doing that you know developing something and I I was almost out of the business at one point of time because I was not able to focus on developing my business as a as a soluble fertilizer player. But uh, fortunately, it is now developed and it is now gaining traction from the market. As far as uh, <clears throat> uh, getting this product in the market, uh, this will start coming to the market two years down the line uh, when we will have, we will see uh, big capacities. And I think uh, it will, very soon it will bring self-reliance and specialty fertilizer at least. This is uh, a soluble fertilizer manufacturing technology. Uh, this technology is special in terms of many things. Uh, first, uh, one single process to produce almost all the soluble fertilizer. Uh, usually for every product there is, an, there is a different technology, but this technology enables production of all products in one process. Uh, secondly, this, this uh, particular technology is zero effluent project. Uh, there is no no emission from this project so that's why i mean th this was one of the ground that minister of mines has taken into consideration and given it a project of uh, national importance uh, we know that in future pollution is a very big problem so we need to develop uh, green technologies which is uh, f fully you know uh, protected from generating effluents because disposing those effluents are becoming increasingly hard whatever technology we have uh, today uh, especially in fertilizer are actually borrowed technology that is not our Indian technology so for every borrowing we have to pay a very big price uh, I personally believe that we need to develop our own technologies and uh, we we need to get away from this you know dependency on foreign technologies what happens we don't get upgradation with the technology then we pay another price for getting the upgradation but if it is our own we can keep on developing speaking of challenges the 2025 fertilizer regulations just kicked in manufacturers and importers are scrambling what's been the biggest roadblock in meeting these new rules uh, fertilizer are divided into two categories one is subsidized another is non-subsidized the non-subsidized fertilizer is responsible for the uh, horticulture success now in non fertilizer subsidized fertilizer segment there are four categories of fertilizer that is actually contributing and um, making it possible Soluble fertilizer, organic fertilizer, micronutrient, and stimulants. Altogether, we call it SOMS. Now, first three, soluble, organic, and micronutrient, were brought under uh, fertilizer control order, and it is regulated for a very long time. Stimulants are now uh, coming under uh, regulation, under fertilizer control order. Uh, stimulant industry is operational uh, for almost 10 years now, uh, so, so far working without regulation. Now the new regulation is uh, bring, b coming in, so, so the industry is not fully ready to you know, adopt to that uh, new adopt to the new regulations. They have to make a lot of investment. Many small players, SMEs who are operating into it, uh, will be wiped out in the process. Uh, but then, uh, as an as an association as an industry, we see the positive side also because uh, some regulation has to be there to control it. Uh, implementation has got certain limitations of manpower, resources, and lack of digitization has made it worse. So understanding of the entire process uh, and, uh, and, and you know, quickly, quick implementation of the process has gone a bit out of the track. Now let's address the elephant in the room. The Agriculture Ministry recently banned certain biostimulant sales. What went wrong? And how do we fix the approval process to get the farmers the tools they need fast? Uh, we we understand it a little bit differently. Uh, I think the uh, honourable minister has not banned the biostimulants. Uh, what he said is uh, linking of biostimulants with subsidised fertiliser. So he is uh, probably talking about some artificial uh, sh shortage created to sell the biostimulants. Uh, he, what he is exactly saying is, I mean, the way we interpret it, he is saying to regulate it. He, he is asking to bring the specification to FCO and then allowing one by one uh, to produce and sell. Uh, this process is very important because otherwise what will happen, there, is, there will be no process. 
no process to regulate the market. Farmers will be uh, confused with the variety of products that people are offering. Every company may have 10 or 15 products, but uh, you know, if we consider 10,000 companies, 10,000 10, uh, producers in the country, then you can imagine how many products farmers are offered, uh, ex farmers are exposed to. So this regulation is very important, but the only thing is this has to come very, uh, the implementation has to happen very quickly because it is halting the, the business of uh, the industry. Biostimulants are under fire. Critics say they are ineffective or forced onto farmers with subsidized fertilizer. Mr. Chakraborty, how is SFI ensuring farmers get the products they can trust? Uh, there are two different things. One is uh, selling biostimulants uh, with other fertilizers, forcibly selling for, with other fertilizers. And another thing is selling biostimulant on the basis of their efficacy and usage and benefits. Uh, SFIA was formed with the uh, entrepreneurs who brought soluble fertilizer, who created the market of soluble fertilizer in India. They never had the uh, luxury to get uh, any product which can monopolize and which can be utilized to sell other products. So what they do is, they go door to door, farmer to farmer, they educate them, they take the entire responsibility of their crop for their losses, not for their gain, and then they recommend product. So they don't sell product, SFIA members sell concepts. Uh, every SFIA member consult to a minimum of 1000 farmers every year, new farmers. And this addition is actually working as the extension of uh, fertilizer. As a, uh, in SFIA also for various fertilizers, we, also, we have also faced many hurdles, uh, regulatory hurdles. But despite all the hurdles, this market has been growing 18% year over year, CAGR. And it is now used everywhere in every crop, starting from cotton to soybean to wheat, everywhere it is adopted, it is not forcibly sold to anyone. So it is SFIA always uh, insist or they, they motivate uh, companies to sell product based on its uh, benefit, cost benefit to the farmers, not, not on the basis of monopolized products. Thousands of biostimulants flood the market, but only a handful have government approval. Why is it so hard to get government approval for them? Uh, there, are, there are a couple of things. Uh, first is this industry was not educated uh, for the process of uh, 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 registering a product. There is a process in FCO. Uh, one has to go to uh, listed University of Government of India. There they have to get their product tested. Then they can uh, file their, um, their claim uh, with the ministry, INM. They will, re they, they will evaluate it, they will send it to ICR again and get it evaluated. If the ICR is confident about the product, then it gets listed in the FCO. Now this entire process was not known to the industry. So nobody was prepared for this law and they did not, do, they did not go to any, uh, they, they have not taken a structural approach to the whole process. So what happened when suddenly this lock came, they were totally in uh, confusion and uh, actually this, they have started the process now. So that's why we see, so everybody uh, made make their own formulations, went to the market, uh, they gave the farmer assurance and they started selling. Now we are trying to you know, um, uh, build a framework in which all these, uh, you know, one lakh, one lakh fifty thousand uh, products can be fitted into and that is possible. That has happened in FCO before also. Uh, SFIA can suggest a couple of remedies which can easily solve uh, this issue. Trust is everything for farmers. How is SFI working with ICR to ensure only science backed high quality biostimulants reach our fields? And what's the plan to stop unapproved products? Uh, when we first discovered SOMS, the impact of SOMS, uh, it was our internal research that you know something, some, some schedule is working uh, in a different way with the farmers. And uh, we started studying uh, grape farmers in Maharashtra, especially in Nashik. We picked up data and we found that the farmers have uh, succeed, succeeded in farming grapes and uh, very, very marginal farmers have become exporters of grape. This is a huge success. Uh, 
first thing we did is we went to ICR, we asked for their schedule and then we asked them to do a comparative study. Uh, to bring everything on documents. So the study is now complete. Uh, NRC Greps has done it. Uh, we have launched the preliminary report also and that report will come. That will establish uh, this claim that SOMS is the most, uh, SOMS is the future. At the same time, uh, we, we also have to accept that you know, SOMS is uh, replacing subsidized fertilizer. It is reducing the subsidy, subsidy burden for the government. Uh, SOMS is the only solution. So farmers will adopt it and we can do it scientifically. We are now generating papers. SOMS is in existence for the last 30 years, but there is no, the, not a single research paper on, on the SOMS practice of farming. We have started doing it and uh, we, will, we will take it uh, forward scientifically and we will uh, establish our claim. New regulations are tough to navigate. How is SFI helping its members stay compliant and keep the industry moving forward? Uh, we are, uh, we, SFIA was born out of uh, an industry which was regulated by fertilizer control order. In SFIA, you will find every member is educated about fertilizer control order. SFIA is not panicked about the new uh, regulations. We have seen regulations coming in and going out uh, for a very long time. We're doing it since 2002, when the first water soluble fertilizer was registered. So we, uh, our advice to the industry, when those who are not uh, a member of SFIA or or uh, people in general that uh, you know, patiently wait for uh, FCO to fully adopt the new regulation. Small mistakes can happen. We can uh, regulate them. We can make. We can give, get changes done. Uh, it's, it's a very very normal process. This process of three four years. I mean, you know, getting accustomed to the new uh, rule of uh, biostimulant may be a bit difficult, but it will yield excellent results both for the industry, for the farmers, and also for the regulators. Let's look to the future. Nano fertilizers and digital agriculture are making waves. How will these cutting edge technologies change the way India farms? Uh, when we first brought soluble fertilizer, uh, we were talking about um, uh, droplet size of spray. When we are talking about specialty fertilizer precision farming, uh, technology is always built in, it's part of it. Uh, if we are talking about drone today, soluble fertilizer uh, is, is the main carrier in drone. When the drip irrigation came in, soluble fertilizer uh, actually made the drip successful. So this, these fertilizers, specialty fertilizers, are going to grow much faster than what it is growing today uh, with the new technology, uh, you know, with, with precision farming, Farmers are getting uh, anal analytical labs in, in their own uh, place. Uh, they are getting weather monitoring system in their own place. So that is the level of uh, penetration of technology already happened uh, in, in specialty fertilizer industry. So what we need to do is we just need to extend it. We, this is limited to certain uh, crops and a, a group of farmers. It's not a small group, it's a very big group. I'm, I'm, when, you, when I say group, it means entire crop. Uh, so, we need to extend it, we need to take it to every corner of the country and if we are able to do it, even a very marginal farmer will earn enough to uh, you know, maintain his family uh, the way he, he, he is willing to. From trade shocks to technological triumphs, Indian fertilizer sector is at crossroads. Thank you Mr. Rajiv Chakravarti for ensuring these high-opening insights.